Meet Kyle. He just got his license and is ready for his first ride. Kyle, what are you doing? Don't you even think about it. Kyle, stop. You can't ride like that. No, Kyle. No. And this is how squids are born. Please, don't be like Kyle. Hello everyone, I'm Danny and I'm Hari and welcome to D-Shift. In this video we're going to be going through all kinds of rules and tips for what kind of gear you're going to need as a beginner rider and after that we will show you exactly what each of us bought and see how well we followed our own advice. Let's go! All right, let's start with the helmet. Your brain is priceless, so you need to protect it. Let's forget about designs, prices, and brands for a second, and let me show you how to choose your helmet step by step. First, decide on what type of helmet you want. Full face, modular, or open face. Full face helmets generally provide highest levels of protection, and modular helmets still offer great level of protection, especially in the high price range. And I just can't stand behind open face helmets since they offer zero protection to your face. Next, you want to make sure that your helmet fits perfectly. It has to be tight, but not too tight. A helmet that's too tight is going to be extremely uncomfortable, while on the other side being too loose, it's not going to be safe enough. The best way to do that is to go to a store and try on different helmets. Maybe you can ask some of the people around to help you with the fitting, and you got to make sure that your ear fits really nice around the lining. Now it's time to talk about safety rating. And I'm just going to give you the gist of it, since channels like Fortnite already went very deep into this rabbit hole. There are basically three relevant safety standards. Standards. The first one is the DOT, which is the oldest one. It comes from the US and is the worst from all three. Next comes ECE, which is basically the European version of DOT. And even though it's a lot better, it's still very flawed. And finally, there is Snell, which is in my opinion, the best one that we have so far, but it comes with a steeper price. So please, when you're buying your helmet, make sure that there's at least one of those stickers on it. In some cases, you might have two or more. To wrap up, if a helmet doesn't have any of those stickers, just don't buy it. And if it has one or more of them, it's gonna be infinitely better. Now you have to consider the materials your helmet is made out of. And there are three options. Polycarbonate, fiberglass, and carbon fiber. Polycarbonate helmets usually are very affordable while still durable. Fiberglass helmets on the other side offer better balance between protection and weight. Finally, carbon fiber helmets are the lightest of the bunch while providing the best protection. But this comes at a considerably higher price. You should pay extra attention to features like ventilation or some visors. And this is very subjective, but just as an example, a bad ventilation is an actual deal breaker for me. Good. Is that a deal breaker for you? I'm afraid so. Me too. While I don't care that much about having a sun visor, since I can just wear sunglasses. In my opinion, there's a specific price line around 300 to 400 euros. And beyond that, you're often paying for extra features, design or brand rather than better quality. Remember, if you can't afford a proper helmet, you can't afford to ride. Next up is the jack. It's not just to make you look cool, but it's wow. also gonna play a crucial role for your protection. A good riding jacket, must have armor, ventilation, and must be made out of durable materials like textile or leather. First, make sure it has CE-rated armors at your shoulders, elbows, and your back. And few jackets also do come with chest protectors. You could choose between leather and textile. Leather offers you greater abrasion resistance with classic style, while textile is more versatile and breathable and also comes with features like waterproofing. Good ventilation is key for long rides, especially in hot weather. Look for jackets with vents that could be opened and closed as you desire. The jacket should fit snugly and comfortable. It shouldn't be too tight, restricting your movements, and it should not be too loose so that it reduces the impact of your armor. Talking about price, choosing a jacket is similar to the process of choosing a helmet. You could find great quality in different price points. In fact, you can find often real gems in lower price classes, especially if you do some price hunting. Rabbit season! Duck season! Rabbit season! Duck season! Rabbit season! Duck season! Remember, jacket is your second skin when you're riding. Make sure it's tough and functional. Even though we strongly recommend getting a full set of gear before hopping on a bike, if you're on a really tight budget, a jacket and a helmet should be considered the bare minimum. Don't forget your gloves. They help protect your hands from elements and road rash. Choose gloves with great comfort, protection and grip. Look for hard knuckle protection, padded palms and reinforced stitching. These will come in handy in case of accident. Gloves come in textile, leather and a combination of both. 
leather offers you protection and durability and the other hand textile gives you breathability and flexibility different gloves for different seasons summer gloves for ventilation winter gloves for warmth some gloves come with waterproofing and thermal liners for all season riding gloves should fit snugly and should not restrict your movement make sure they cover your wrists and all the stains are secure look for good grip and tactile feedback this would especially help you in controlling your bike during wet conditions Riding pants are a must. Regular jeans just won't cut it. Most of the time, if you're going for textile jacket, there will be a matching pair of pants to it. And if you're going for a more casual style or you have a leather jacket, riding jeans are a great option. Finally, let's talk about boots. They offer protection to your feet and ankles. And there are many different kinds of riding shoes or riding boots to consider. Choosing your boots is a fine game of balance between protection and usability. On one side of the spectrum, we have the riding shoes, which are extremely comfortable and you can totally go for a whole day of work with them. On the other side of the spectrum, we have MX boots, which offer the best protection out there, but because this is the only priority, they lack in comfort and ventilation. They also squeak a lot. <laughs> and look like moon boots. For people looking for one boot that strikes the perfect balance and performs well across the board, we recommend something like the former boots. These boots offer a great mix of protection, visibility and comfort, which makes them perfect for all types of riding conditions. Now, as we previously promised, let's see if we followed our own advice while we were buying our first gear. Let's start with you, Harry. Yeah, sure. Here's what I got when I bought my bike. As you see, I went all in with the brand BMW. And there's a pretty good reason for that. I had a pretty good offer when I got my bike. And I had some clearance sale too. That being said, let's start with the helmet. I got the BMW Evo 7. Despite of the price being a little steep, helmet is obviously a lifesaver. These are the three facts which I love about my helmet. The first thing, it's a modular helmet. I can just flip it up, get more air when it's in the traffic. The second thing, since I wear glasses, the sun visor helps me. And the third point, it's light. Continuing with the jacket and pants. I went for the BMW GS Rally kit plus the waterproof overalls. Here are a couple of things which I really like about the GS Rally suit and couple that I don't enjoy as much. I really love the design and especially the color of the jacket. Also, this could easily become a four season suit if you add some layers. Funny enough, the same color that I love is my first issue with the jacket because it gets dirty so damn fast. These are my gloves, the GTX Summer and Winter 2-in-1 Gore-Tex gloves. And I have almost the same gripes with them as I do with my jacket. They are extremely versatile and can easily be used for all four seasons but are a bit too toasty for the summer. And finally for footwear, I got the BMW Soul GTX sneakers and gravel Evo riding boots. Here I'm just gonna say that I can't be any happier with my choice. As you can see, Harry was working with a pretty good budget and he managed to get some top tier gear that is extremely versatile in all kinds of conditions. Now it's my turn and you're gonna see that I went a bit differently about it. The biggest reason for that is my very high tolerance for cold while I literally cannot survive any temperatures above 20 degrees. So ventilation was on top of my priority. Another important factor was that 80% of my time I was gonna do commuting on my bike while at the same time I was planning a 10-day camping trip through the Alps literally two weeks after I got my license. My strategy was to go hard on price hunting so I could basically forget about getting those very premium brands. That being said, I made zero compromises with my helmet and I got the Arai Tour X4. For jacket and pants, I went with a cheaper brand called Vanucci and the suit is called the Tanami 2. They were already basically half the price of the premium brands but I also got them on I think it was 40 or 50 percent sale which meant that I could afford a complete new set for my commuting which included a cheapish mesh jacket for summer plus these awesome jeans. For boots I chose the Dainese Raptor Airs they were more for commuting but I also got MX boots for when I was learning to ride off-road and for my long trips. My first pair of gloves were the Sand Tree from Revit and my priority there was safety and mainly ventilation. For rain protection, as I mentioned before, getting wet doesn't bother me that much. So I just got the cheapest, literally the cheapest jacket from the store and I've probably used it two or three times for the last three years. I, I have to say I don't regret any of my choices. After almost 40,000 kilometers on the road, my helmet, jacket, pants, my second setup with jeans and my MX boots are still in great shape. On the other hand, 
I very quickly realized that I go through two pairs of gloves per year. Currently I own the summer and the winter gloves from Climb and I can't be happier with them, but I gotta say they're very, very expensive. I mean, if you have the budget, go for it. Those were all the essentials for your first riding gear. We really hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions or suggestions for us, please drop them in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any of your future videos. Ride safe.